Have you ever wanted a set of irons that aren't quite a blade, aren't quite a cavity and look this good? Let's do it and let's do it now. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson and welcome to this YouTube channel. Guys, in today's video, I have the Vega VDC irons. Guys, these look beautiful. They look absolutely sleek, so sexy, and they also have an air of forgiveness about them, which so many golfers desire, as well as having something, it looks like a piece of jewelry, doesn't it? Guys, today I have reviewed the VDC, I've reviewed the VMB, and also the VSC. I can't believe I've got all those three right first time. If you want to see those videos, guys, hit that subscribe button below. Today we're focusing on the VDC, the dual cavity. The dual cavity, you could say, the jewel in the crown of the Vega Classic lineup. We've been in the simulator, we're going to talk numbers, we're going to talk dispersions, and we're going to talk tech as well. Immediately, quite a thick top line looking at it. We've got 165 yards with a 7 iron. And that is just so easy to get up in the air. Little buttery fade, right hand side of the green. Not bad to kick things off with. Guys, we're gonna test these golf clubs on some different yardages today. See just how good they are. See just how forgiving they are because the swings have been hot and cold, I think we can say. Also guys, wait till you see the numbers. I'm not gonna lie, I just want to have a hole in one on this hole. That's why we've started on this hole. Uh, and the more chances you give yourself, the more chance you're gonna have of getting one. Not with mud on the ball like that. Right. That's another lovely high fade. This thing's so easy to get moving from left to right, which for me is actually quite a godsend. Let's go off the turf for this third and final shot on the opening hole. Can I play it down? Can I get that versatility to hit a low shot into this par three? Yes, you can. That's the best one of the lot as well. Right, guys, let's get down there. Let's see where they are. Again, we're gonna talk numbers, we're gonna talk spec. I'm definitely gonna give them a clean as well because it's criminal to leave something that looks that good um, that day. So three different tee shots there, two quite similar shots, and then one lovely low penetrating one. You can see we've hit the green three times in a row here. Guys, when we do talk numbers, when we look at the ball flights, the spin rates, the ball speeds, and the distance that we've done here in the simulator room at Woolley Park Golf Club, one of the things I love about this is the consistency, is that dispersion consistency, probably more so than any of the clubs that I have tested today. Remember, stay tuned if you want to see some of the other Vega irons. They will be on the channel already or coming soon. So three out of three, let's move to the next hole. Let's see how many greens we can hit in regulation, how close we can get some of these shots, and also test them from some different lies, because with it being a dual cavity, this is the iron... I'm going to say where the player will probably not be hitting the fairway as often as the person who's buying the MB. But then it depends who's buying the MB because the MB generally gets bought by people who shouldn't be buying the MB and buying this one. So stay tuned. Now, I must admit, the Vega VDC for me isn't the most enchanting golf club in the Vega Classic range. However, for the average golfer who wants that element of forgiveness, the square toe shape and the dual cavity may well suit them a little bit more. So the specs in the VDC, the smaller cavity is designed to reduce the thickness of the main muscle back, moving the center of gravity slightly higher up the blade. With a slightly squarer toe shape than other Vega cavity back models, it also has less offset for a slightly lower ball flight, and it's not going to promote that right to left shot if you do struggle with a snap hook like I do, even with your irons. The ultimate player's set of one-piece forged clubs designed to send a ball in a strong penetrating flight. They feature the unique dual cavity design, slightly square toe shape, and just like the VMBs and VSCs are available in four iron or five iron two pitching wedge. So you can maybe stick hybrid in there at the top of your bag if you want to. That, I'd say that's the boring stuff out of the way, but I don't find it boring, I find that quite interesting. I also find it interesting how they've still kind of shammed off and stuff little bits of this club to make it still look sleek and sexy but can we pick different ball flights for this so the reason behind this dual cavity is that you can hit it slightly lower can i hit a couple of stingers down this fairway while we wait for the green to clear um and i'll take that out i obviously have to read all that because there's no way i can remember it i struggle to read it to be honest so right we're going to try and play some slightly low shots with this i do feel like that top line is a bit too big if we come and have a look at this here against a golf ball for me, slightly less offset, but if you look at the size of that top line, I honestly think that that's a little bit um, big, to say the least. But if you want a forgiving golf club, maybe that's what you're after. Right, I'll line myself up again. 
And let's go with ball back in stance. See, that's chasing like a five iron and it is a seven iron. If you get this level of versatility with the irons that still look this good, remember guys, these aren't cheap. They're rocking up about 1300 pounds, maybe 350 pounds. And if you want the shafts puring, that's like an extra 300 pound. Exactly. Laura says, what does it mean? Basically, it means every, every, every shaft has a spine in it and they align the spine like they make sure it's properly aligned, I believe. Right, same again. In fact, now let's see if we can get it up in the air this time. We're going to pick three different shots. Very easy to get up in the air as well. So you do have that element of versatility. I reckon they're going to be bang next to each other as well. Laura, what shot do you want now? Third one. High fade. And the high fade is there. So you still get the element of workability. You still get the element of forgiveness. I mean, really, with an iron that looks that good, what more could you want? Um, let's hit some more shots in some greens. Now, a really interesting argument for me with the price of these clubs, yes, they are not cheap. They're not quite the most expensive. I think they are probably in line with some other premium golf clubs. These are the forgiving clubs. These are the clubs for the people who want to play better golf, but also golf is their main hobby. Golf is their thing that they like to spend their money on. So a lot of people in the comments might be going, well, James, if you're not that good at golf, why would you spend that amount of money? And I don't see the argument of golf ability to golf budget. If you like your golf, if you're not quite that good at it, but you work hard, you've got a good disposable income and that's what you want to dispose of it on golf, then I've got no problem with people spending a lot of money on golf stuff. You don't have to be a tour pro to spend your money on golf because tour pros don't spend the money on golf. So someone might as well do. And you see, for me, that argument works both ways because I know scratch golfers who hardly spend any money on golf. They just work hard at it. The money they do have, they probably spend on lessons anyway. And then they have that natural ability. They have that natural talent. That doesn't mean to say that you have to go and buy a set of vague irons to be a scratch golfer. It doesn't mean to say you have to go and buy a set of vague irons to shoot good scores. And you don't have to buy a set of vague irons to enjoy your golf. But if you want to buy a set of vague irons, it makes you enjoy golf more, then who are we to have a comment on it? Look how consistent these shots are. So the big high fade that's finished just to the right is a couple of yards short, and the other two over to the left are actually, uh, you could throw a blanket over them. So very, very happy with that. The fact that I've been able to hit a high shot and a low shot and then go the same distance just shows that that dual cavity is doing what it says it does and what you'd want it to do. Right, flag hunting. And I do happen to think that's quite an interesting topic about money as well. So a lot of people may not even consider going for the Vega range. You may not know how much they are. £1,300, around $1,600. For me, Vega have been around a long time, though. They've always been that club where you look in someone's bag and you go, oh, not necessarily they're a great golfer, but they love golf. And I love that about a brand. Right, we've got 175 yards. Fairway, can we hit... The green a few times here now the dc certainly feels heavier for me than the mb and the rest of the classic lineup if you like a heavy head i know whenever i work with spriggs in mid handicap golf we haven't seen for ages actually we need to get mark back on the channel don't we he loves a weighty golf head because it allows him to feel it more in the shaft right this should be a right about the right distance when we did look at numbers guys which we're going to do in just a second this was the longest one out of that classic lineup this flag is tucked away on the left hand side can we attack it with these clubs the more and more i hit this the more and more i think that top line's a little bit too thick for me but it would be all right for someone who's maybe not as good at golf maybe just wants something a bit more forgiving someone like my brother i suppose was that's where i was going with that so um he probably doesn't even watch them but See, I get that one as well, quite a lot with this club. It just comes out a little bit low. It's still a good distance. It's still on the green. We're not too worried about it, but I get that more than other clubs that I have tested recently. I want to get that nice high ball flight, that nice penetrating ball flight. That's what Vega claimed these clubs are about. Come on, just put a good swing on. That, that is the shot that you want. That's the money shot. And I was so confident that could go in. 
that's finished very very close we're trying to carry a bunker here at about 170 and as soon as that left is it oh Laura's got, it is close as soon as that left the club I had no worries that was going the distance it was carrying the bunker guys let's jump in the studio let's have a look at the numbers for the Vega VDC clubs and then let's jump back out here and see if we can that's insanely close isn't it let's have a look so the one thing that really shocked me when testing the Vega VDC iron was how good it felt in comparable to how much forgiveness it actually gave you. For me, the top line is a little bit thick. I don't think I could potentially use it. Maybe if it was a driving iron or a long iron, then it might feel a little bit better, but the numbers really do speak for themselves. You can see that I've hit the green every single time here, which isn't that easy on this shot. We have a ball speed of 118.1, a launch angle 17.4, only an average spin of 5,000, which isn't a lot. Average carry at 174, an average total 178. But look at those deviations, guys. Four yards and three yards. These are some very consistent golf clubs. I must have swung it quite well, randomly as well. So some great numbers there. And guys, look at that turf interaction from that last shot. That's what I love about Vega irons. You'll see that there is, that leading edge is kind of buffed away a little bit. That's designed for nicer turf interaction. And that's exactly what we got. Right, can we hit another one? If we get closer than that, I think it's in, because that's literally teetered on the edge. Guys, what do you think of those numbers as well? And I've got another comment to make on price as well. So bear with me. Let's have that same golf swing, a nice high ball flight. Oh, that's fading a little bit i don't mind that as a bad shot because it's just going to be in the middle of the green it's safe it's gone the exact distance i wanted it to even though it wasn't struck slightly as good interesting laura's just picked up on the price point there so they're all the same price in the classic lineup we have the vmb we have the vdc and the v sc i always get i always miss that one out but they're all the same price and that goes to my argument earlier of just because you're a better golfer or a worse golfer doesn't mean your budget should be affected by how much you want to spend on your golf clubs guys they are let's see let's go and see where that's gone so i want to see how close it is and check those out for three shots into the screen that's the worst shot we've hit over to the right hand side still flag high the dual cavity is doing its job this third shot which wasn't bad wasn't good we've got about 20 feet for birdie and um yeah, that shot up there pretty much sums up what I think about this Vega Classic lineup, guys. I've really, really enjoyed testing them. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more Vega Iron content, including a review of all three of these clubs and a huge comparison. And apart from that, guys, I'm going to very much look forward to seeing you all at the same time tomorrow. Don't be late. Bye.